Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings insights, perspectives, and attitudes of our always thoughtful Democratic guests. Today, I'm delighted to have Paul Fong as our guest. Paul Fong is a longtime leader in the community. Uh, you grew up in the area, not far from here. Uh, tell us where you grew up, uh, where you're from, where'd you go to school? Mm -hmm. Uh, originally, I was from Macau. I moved to Sunnyvale when I was a young youngster, three years old, and uh -huh. uh, been in the, the the area since that time. Um, I grew up in Sunnyvale. Yeah, yeah, and uh, moved to Cupertino as an adult about 20 years ago, and recently, a year ago, I moved to West San Jose, mm -hmm. and that's my history. Well, that's uh, I guess that's all there is to it. Not so quick, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that you were uh, grew up with a lot of progressive people in Sunnyvale, mm -hmm. uh, that you were uh, active, uh, an athlete, uh, frankly the star of your football team mm -hmm. and everything. So let's hear a little bit more about the younger years. Well, I was very fortunate to meet some outstanding mentors, uh, Asian Pacific Islander mentors, uh, because I'm an Asian P API member myself mm -hmm. in the community. And so uh, I met Paul Sakamoto when I was a freshman. And he taught Reverend me, Sakamoto. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the Superintendent Sakamoto. Yeah. Yeah. He taught me about multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I met Mike Honda oh. out in the hood. Oh. He uh -huh. came out in the hood. He, he was doing uh, Peace Corps work at San Salvador. He thought he was still doing Peace Corps work when he returned. <laughs> and he came out and, and, and I met him in, in the barrio and uh, he uh, inspired me. Mm. Inspired. I've been following his shoes sh in his shoe steps ever since. Oh. That time. So that goes back a little ways. Yeah, it does. High school years. So uh, did that give you a sense when you were in high school, when you were that young, that uh, public service might be for you? You know, I was the captain uh, and the leader of the football team, yeah. the varsity football team. And, and there I learned a lot about leadership and I learned a lot about the community. It was a very diverse community. Uh, there were African Americans, Latinos, uh, uh, working class whites. Uh, uh, and Asian Americans, very few Asian Americans on the football team. I think there was only two of us. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, it uh, ta taught me a lot. It taught me about diversity, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to carry that agenda, diversity. And uh, I, when I got elected to the Foothill De Anza Community College District, that was the forefront of my agenda: as diversity, diversity across the institution. And I, 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 I beat that into the whole administration and in the institution for. 15 years, mm. and now they're a very diverse uh, institution. So you brought that awareness based on your own experiences growing up in, in Sunnyvale and meeting other inspiring people. Yes, that, absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you, I learn from people, and uh, I apply uh, what I learn uh, from people. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, jobs did you uh, have after uh, college? What what did you get into? Well, I, uh, I I uh, opened a flower shop because I opened a flower shop, uh, a retail florist, uh, in, in high school. Oh, uh, in high school, I uh, we had there was a flower stand and there was a bottleneck traffic on Mary North Mary Avenue, mm -hmm. and, and we just put flowers out and we started selling like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I I started retailing flowers. We we grew up growing flowers. We were flower growers, but your uh, family was. my family uh -huh. was, and we th threw some flowers away. They were only a week old. And so it usually gets to the retail market in a week. Oh. And so I just took it out of the garbage can and started selling them. And they, they sold like hotcakes. And so I, I, I pursued uh, the retail floor, flower business. And then I, I, we sold the nursery and I moved the uh, florist uh, to the other side of town. Mm. And it's called the Flower Cottage. And it's, it's still, still there. It's still there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you bring happiness to people every day. Yes, I do. Uh, I mean, it's a great job to deliver flowers because they're all smiling and they're mm -hmm. very appreciative of the deliveries. So that tells me you're a, a small businessman. You have empathy and understand what a business person has to go through. To yep, I've been a small business person all my life, uh -huh. and it's part of my value system. Uh, I was recently endorsed by the California Small Business Association because of my, oh. uh, my uh, small business background. Oh. Well, that's a uh, credential. That's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. um, what other kinds of uh, early uh, experiences did you have in the world of work? Well, I, when I was in college, I decided to uh, sell real estate because I, huh. I made some real estate investments for the family, and they they doubled and tripled during the early 70s and mm -hmm. mid 70s. And so uh, I uh, I got my real estate broker's license. 
Gee whiz, yes. in the late 70s. And, and I started doing real estate. And of course, I ventured into uh, development, construction. Oh. And I did my, continued on with my real estate sales. Wow. Yeah. But meanwhile, I know that you went down another road. You became a, a college professor. Yes. Well, I, you know, I wanted to use my master's degree. <laughs> I, went, I was in college for so long. I have two master's degrees. Oh, you and, do? Yeah, I do. I have an MPA from San Jose State and an MA in education from USF, University oh, wow. of San Francisco. And so I just wanted to use my what I studied in college. And so I, I started teaching uh, Asian American studies at uh, uh, De Anza College, and uh, of course. Uh, they were going to eliminate the intercultural studies division the year I ran. I, I ran, I got elected, and I reinstated the intercultural studies division at that time. And uh, it was uh, a pretty uh, interesting experience. So that is what you mean about how you uh, broaden the horizons of the school board and therefore their mission and everything else? Yes, that's part of the, the, the reason uh, I ran, because I wanted to uh, institute uh, diversity across the curriculum and, and across the institution. Mm -hmm. And I know you ended up uh, as a professor at uh, Evergreen College. Y yes, when I ran for the uh, board at uh, Foothill De Anza, I had to re resign my yeah. position. Yeah. There would be a conflict of interest to right. teach in the same board that you serve as a trustee. And so I went to Evergreen Valley College to teach. I, I taught the Introduction to Ethnic Studies course. And then in 1996, uh, they opened up a position in political science, mm. and I applied for that. I was teaching political science part-time, too, mm. and uh, I got the job as a full-time political science professor. Mm. I think I was the first uh, API, Asian Pacific Islander, full-time professor of political science in, in, in California at that time. Wow. Yeah, the APIs were not seen as American government instructors for some reason. Well, one of your passions has bring, uh, to bring APIs into the political mainstream, and um, you're considered one of the leaders in doing that. Another way of saying that is kind of the godfather of mm -hmm. the API community, and that you want to make sure that we have good representation uh, mm -hmm. as our community mm -hmm. reflects. Yeah. In yeah, I was one of the founders of Asian Americans for Community Involvement, it's celebrating its 42nd or 3rd anniversary wow. now. and. Uh, it, uh, it was a very interesting experience. It was social justice, it was inclusion, it was about inclusion, it's about getting Asian Pacific Islanders on, at the table, mm -hmm. which we weren't at the table at that time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was a, uh, a very strong advocacy movement on my part and all those that I worked with. And uh, we were very successful in starting ACI. Now it's about a $20 million per year organizations beyond so social justice. Yeah. But social justice is still part of its mission, but they do it through s delivery of services. A lot of very important health care programs. Yeah, health care programs uh, yeah. and uh, domestic violence programs. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, everything under the gamut just about. Yeah. yeah. So you helped found that organization 40-something years ago. Let's be honest, you were pretty young then. I was 21. <laughs> I'm a senior citizen now. I'm 62. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so... Uh, it's it's been part of my life. Yeah, I grew with the organization. I, I chair the honorary council now of Aki. Uh, we do the fundraising portion of mm -hmm. Aki, and uh, I still have a, an affinity with Aki, and I, I love the what they do, and it's part of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I support that organization. Well, it's fabulous and run very well now by Michelle Liu and mm -hmm. another great community leader. Oh yeah, she's wonderful. She's great. I I, I spotted her, and we just. We hired her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good move, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> so you went from being on the Foothill De Anza School Board. Uh, you decided to uh, take another leap, and you ran for the state assembly. Mm -hmm. After being reelected to the school board four times, I figure I'd look for some other challenges. And I've done everything in the community college world. I served at the local level, the state level, and the national level on the boards of directors oh. of, of, of organizations serving the community colleges the ACCT uh, and the C Triple CT, California Community College Trustees Association. And I, I felt like I learned everything that I could about the community colleges. I wanted to learn how we got our funding mm. uh, even better. I, I, so I, I went to the, uh, run for the state assembly and I, I won in the primary and then I won in the general election and I've been serving in the state assembly. I'm on my last year 
it's a six year term, I'm my sixth year, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be, I'm termed out this year. Mm -hmm. And so now that I'm termed out, I'm still got the energy and I want to continue to serve, and so I'm running for San Jose City Council. They've got a lot of challenges in the city. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm running. Yeah. If there wasn't any challenges, I probably would not have run. But there's a lot of challenges, I love challenges, and I'm a problem solver, and I think I could solve those problems in the city of San Jose. Well, and we'll talk about uh, what some of those problems were, but before that, uh, w being in the state legislature, I think, would be a frustrating uh, position. There's a lot of uh, fighting, infighting, mm -hmm. and serious uh, funding gaps and yeah. all that. Well, when I first started in the state legislature, I already knew that we were in a structural budget deficit, but I didn't know we were $62 billion deficit. Yeah, that's serious. That's serious money. And so we were ready to go off the financial cliff. We had to do some serious cuts. And I, I ran on an education agenda, and the very first thing I did was I cut education by several billion dollars. Mm. It was just, uh, it was, I, we borrowed a couple of billion dollars from Prop 98, and we cut it about a billion, billion mm -hmm. and a half. And so it was a very uh, trying time. It was very difficult times to cut the programs that you care so much about because you had to balance the budget. Well, you didn't go to Sacramento to cut education, but you probably didn't have a lot of options. No, we didn't have much options. Everybody uh, took got some things cut from them. And so uh, we had to balance the budget. We, we were preventing the state from going over the financial cliff. and. Uh, uh, we, I've been uh, addressing the budget uh, deficit for four years, and in the fifth year, last year, we've gotten into a, a surplus situation. And this year, we have a huge surplus. We were able to even pay down on some debt, start a rainy day fund, and still have a surplus. It seems like that's also reduced some of the animosity between political parties and, and, and all that, that people are working a little bit more closely together. Well, we're, they, because the Republicans have no choice but to work together with the Democrats, okay. because we can approve a budget with a simple majority vote. And so they, uh, they've resigned themselves to uh, the fact that they have to work with us. Okay. And so that's the, that was a, a good thing on, uh, on the budget, uh, reducing it to 50% plus one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, improving the budget. That was a very smart move. Yeah. And typical with what most other states in the nation do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I work across the aisle and I listen to Republicans. They have some, they have some good common sense -ish things about expenditures and stuff like that. And if it makes good sense, I'll adopt it in my value system. I'm open to working across the aisle. With good, them. good. Yeah. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we got a lot of t things to talk about in terms of the city of San Jose. We'll be right back with Paul Fong. Hi, I'm California State Senator Joe Simidian. We're fortunate to live in exciting but challenging times. It's a new day for America and for the state of California, and you and I can both play a role through our Democratic Party. Democratic Party is a great way to make sure that the views and values we hold dear are expressed in the decision making at the national, state, and local level. It's also a great opportunity to spend some time with like-minded folks who are committed to making our community, our state, and our nation a better place. So find the Democratic Party opportunity in your neighborhood, your community. Call 408-445-9500. You can make a difference, you can have a good time doing it, and you can have the satisfaction of knowing that you played a role in this next chapter in American history. Welcome back to Democratic Television and our guest, Paul Fung. Paul, you've uh, been walking uh, doors in District 1, mm -hmm. uh, and I know you know District 1 pretty well. You've represented that area in the State Assembly for six years now. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you learning from people? Uh, what do they care about? What do they want to see in their mm -hmm. uh, next council member? And also represented District 1, the vast majority of District 1, for 15 years prior to that as a oh, okay. trustee with the Foothill De Anza Community College District. So a 20-year history. 21-year 20, history. 21. Yeah. And so I kind of know District 1 quite well. Uh, but I've gone door to door to really find out what the uh, needs are. And uh, the, the most common uh, concern is the lack of public safety, mm. um, lack of police officers. and. Uh, the, the, the crime is increasing in the city. Uh, we were once the safest big city in America. Now we're like the 50th safest city in America. Um, we, uh, uh, we have more auto thefts than all five boroughs of the city of New York. Wow, yeah, in and, San Jose. In San Jose, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so uh, th they, they are aware of the crime situation, and they want to address that. But you know, our police officers are fleeing 
uh, and they're 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 leaving. It, it's we got to stop the bleeding. Uh, we got to start bringing the police officers back. Well, a lot of people think that that was the result of the city trying to tackle pension reform. That, um, that's so, part of it. That's yeah. part of it. I think they did away with disability in the second tier. And any any cop that works, and they're going to get disabled on the job. They want to make sure that they have security. Uh, and so they only have security if they can find another job. But if they can't find another job in the city, they're out of luck. And so, um, you know, that, that needs to be addressed. That seriously needs to be addressed. But more importantly is that we need to bring the uh, public employees back to the table. Because that's the way it works. I've done three pension reforms in my day. And different levels. And different levels, yeah. F 17 years ago, I uh, instituted uh, a two-tier system for lifetime medical benefits. I did away with uh, lifetime medical benefits for the new hirees after 1997. And I had a big, strong fight with the labor unions. In the uh, community college district. In the district. community college district. And, but they respected. They respected uh, me for my fight because it was the right thing to do. We would have been $200 million in the hole today if we didn't do what we did. Uh, so um, I created a two-tier system 17 years ago. And then a couple of years ago, I uh, did the CalPERS uh, reform, mm. pension reform. We ended double dipping, spiking, and capping the uh, maximum amount that uh, people can draw on. And so that'll save the state about $20 billion over the next 30 years. Now, my understanding is that what you did is you sat down with the bargaining units, or your representatives right. sat down with the bargaining units and said, we have some tough negotiations to deal with. Let's do it. Yes. And that's what's been missing in San Jose. That's what's been missing. They've got to be at the table. They, they know what they can give up, and they need to bring, present that at the table. You just can't go and take away from them, because you might take away something that's really treasured, like disability insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that is something that uh, we need to work on. I also uh, did uh, this Cal Sturr's pension reform oh, this, teachers. this past year. Teachers. Oh. Yeah, we, we had a, a Sixty-four billion dollars structural budget deficit until we reformed the uh, CalPER system, CalSTRS system, excuse me, uh, and we uh, had the districts contribute more, the employees contribute more, and the state kicked in a little bit, it, and that was done through the trailer bill and the budget this past year. Mm. And so that, uh, so I've done three pension reforms, and all the times I've done it, they've got to be on the table. The labor unions got to be at the table. And uh, they know what they can give up, and uh, you know we need to negotiate the way negotiate it. Yeah. Well, it's understandable that uh, public safety is number one. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other issues you're hearing when you go knocking on doors? Yeah. Interesting enough, libraries and parks. Ah. Yeah. The library hours are not sufficient for the users. They close down after five. They close down on weekends when mm. they need it That's yeah. the most. We need to extend our library hours for the community. And that'll get some of the kids off the streets, too. Mm -hmm. And also another thing is that the lack of park space. We need to negotiate with the schools so that the schools will open up their facility for par uh, as a park for the community. Mm. And we need to bring back the school liaison that the city had that Ron Gonzalez started. Mm. Uh, and we need to bring that back so that we can uh, open up the, uh, the, the schools as parks. Mm. Those sound like uh, legitimate things to do. Uh, yeah, very legitimate. Uh, very, those are going to be my top three agenda items when I get into the uh, city. Also, there's some issues about uh, uh, some uh, planning issues and s some uh, uh, jobs, housing uh, issues that uh, we have a ratio of 1.3 jobs to uh, one housing unit, and mm. we're at about 0.8. We're far away from the goal. We should. We need to be set reset that goal into being a more realistic goal, like maybe one to one. Well, that's an issue that transcends everything. It transcends party, uh, income, and mm -hmm. all that. If you mm -hmm. don't have the housing, it's great to grow jobs, but if people can't live here, right, you right. get a problem and you're gonna price out folks. Absolutely, and the more housing uh, that we, we develop, we also bring in affordable housing. And so that's what's lacking. And we're not addressing the housing issues in its entirety. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at it as entirety, affordable housing and the regular housing mm -hmm. issues. Um, so you're finding that people are receptive to, uh, to you? I mean, I guess, you know, many of them that are older, longer uh, in place residents, mm -hmm. Paul Fong's not a stranger 
to them. Well, they know they know who I am. They know what I'm about. They know my progressive values, and uh, if they like me, they'll vote for me. If they don't like me, they won't vote for me. Fortunately, a majority or supermajority of the people in the district like me, I believe. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find that out. We'll find out. We'll find that out. Soon. Yeah, a little later. Mm -hmm. What are some other tough issues that you had to deal with in the assembly where you showed that you're willing to do what your conscience dictates rather than give in to uh, popular votes? Well, uh, one thing, I, I, I initiated the Shark Protection Act. We protect the sharks because the sharks were getting finned and thrown back in the ocean to die in large numbers. And if the shark's population depletes, uh, and it goes extinct. It can go extinct in, in my lifetime if we don't stop the finning operations. Mm. And we need to save the, the sharks because the sharks are very important for our ocean's ecosystem. They're mm -hmm. the top food predator. They keep the balance of uh, the ocean in place. They're the regulators of the ocean. They, they eat all the garbage up and uh, they, uh, they keep our oceans clean. And so we need the sharks to be alive to do that. And so I, I, I banned shark's fin. And when I banned shark's fin, I banned shark, shark's fin soup, which was a delicacy in the Chinese. Uh, you got a lot market. of heat for that I, I uh, did. from the Chinese community. I did. I did. But I ha it was the right thing to do. I had to debate my ethnic consciousness versus my environmental consciousness. Mm. And the major devastation to our environment uh, was not worth eating shark's fin. And so, uh, it, you know, it, it just overwhelmed and dominated my ethnic consciousness, so, my, my yeah. environmental consciousness. So a lot of that then comes to, you want to have greater education about the impact of people's choices. Right. And it's working. The shark's fin ban is working. Now, eight states have banned it. The, uh, uh, China has uh, banned it from its official function. Oh. The airlines have stopped shipping it over, oh. uh, over here. And uh, uh, hotel chains and restaurant chains and, bar and grocery store chains have banned it from sale. And in fact, it, the re I just uh, heard a statistic that shark spins uh, sales was reduced by 70% last year. Wow. 70%. So we're saving 70% of the uh, shark species. Wow. Yeah. Well, I can see you walking around in a shark suit and being cheered, not just because <laughs> of the San Jose sharks. Yeah. I, I love the San Jose sharks. And yeah. I think they love me too. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. That's a, a fair thought. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think you might be able to do for the schools? You know, people say, well, the council doesn't deal with school issues, but, you know, if you keep library hours uh, open longer, mm -hmm. you're really helping uh, people in their education. Well, we need to keep our schools open longer, too. I mean, mm -hmm. that's where we, we, the uh, liaison with the city can actually keep our after-school programs and also use the schools for a park. Uh, and so we need a school liaison to make those things happen. And that's something that the city used to have, but they got rid of it because right. of the budget problems. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. I'm, I want to reinstate, institute that. Position. So um, the city does seem to be in a greater financial health. There seems to be improvements. Of course, helping, quote, the business climate uh, helps with that. You do have a business background. I do. I've been endorsed by the California Small Business Association because I've been a small business person all my life. I understand business, yeah. and I, I serve on the Jobs, Economic Development, and Economy Committee, which promotes small businesses throughout the state. We pass the uh, Go Biz, which is an executive branch uh, position, which uh, promotes big business and trade. And so we, we actually encourage uh, business uh, in the state of California through Go Biz and the Jobs, Economic Development, and our Economy uh, Standing Committee in the Assembly, which I serve on. I was a founding member of it. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you were a community college uh, trustee and you thought you want to run for the assembly because you want to understand the funding process. Mm -hmm. Do you think that experience would serve you well on the San Jose City Council? Oh yes, absolutely. I know exactly how, where to cut and how to cut when times are bad and I know how to spend it when, when times are good. Uh, and so I've, I've seen both times in my 21 years experience and uh, every budget that I have approved have been balanced with a healthy reserve. In fact, this last uh, budget that I approved was balanced with a healthy reserve and we paid down on some debt as well. And so uh, I'm very pleased with my uh, budgeting uh, experience mm -hmm. in the in public office. So you know how to look for staff people too that are gonna help uh, do that behind the scenes work to come up with plans for you to either approve or disapprove or whatever. Yeah, I have great staff. I mean, if 
staffing is just about everything. I mean, if you don't have good staff, you don't have good policy. Yeah. And so you have to have good staff to make good policy. And so I've got great staff, and I've been very effective in uh, making policies. I've I've passed over 50 bills in my uh, oh. six years there. That and uh, there's, I'm not done yet. I've still got about half a dozen bills to uh -huh. look at and, and pass. And uh, and uh, I've, I've done cutting edge bills like the Shark Protection Act, which mm -hmm. was a, a global concern and that uh, w initiated the awareness of saving our sharks mm -hmm. and our ocean's ecosystem. You're a good man. Well, thank you very much. So if people want to get involved in your campaign, we have about a minute left. Do you have a website or some way they can go and learn more about Paul Fong? Yes, paulfongforcouncil.com. Yeah. paulfongforcouncil.com. They okay. can go to my website and find out about what my campaign is all about. And do you have a need for volunteers? You you have other people walking precincts besides you? Yeah, I do. I have a, a lot of people walking precincts and making phone calls for me, and I can use more. Uh -huh. And so please... Uh, Contact me through my website, and I'll be be, be able to get in touch with you. And uh, I, I need more volunteers, so uh, thank you for uh, having me. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to express my values in this show because I'm a true Democrat, as you know, and I'm, I'm fairly progressive. And uh, um, yeah, I know how to be moderate too. Mm -hmm. As a small business person, you have to be kind of moderate. You have to be centered. And uh, but I'm, I carry progressive values as well, and I'm a very successful small business person with progressive values. Well, Paul, you're a great guy, and I look forward to seeing your uh, four years and then second four years on the San Jose City Council. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for having me. Great. Thanks for watching Democratic Television. Give us a call at 408-445-9500 or visit our website, www.sccdp. Dot org. Help make a difference, and we'll see you on the campaign trail.